Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Everybody good? Excellent. It is great to be back. Um, if you remember, I don't know if you remember or not, the last time I, I was here uh, and I got to grace this stage, uh, we talked about what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And we talked about some different things, and today is going to be um, a reminder of that, uh, and a, a little bit different, but just our daily walk with God. What, what daily disciplines do we need in our lives uh, to keep us on the right path? That's what we're going to talk about this morning, daily disciplines. And Jordan uh, spoke amazingly already during the prayer time uh, about one of the biggest daily disciplines that we need, um, and that's prayer, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but will you guys uh, pray with me, please? Father, we come, and we thank you for this morning. Lord, I'm humbled to be up here and to be able to bring um, your word to your people, and Father, I pray right now that you would empty me of myself and fill me with your spirit, Lord, that the words that come out of my mouth would not be my own, but they would be yours. They would be your words going out to your flock. I pray that you would open up our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear the words that you would need us to hear, that, that we would sit here and it would be a divine appointment, Lord, that it would be us meeting with you. And you would be speaking to each person in here. You would be speaking to each person that watches this online, Lord, that we would just hear you and we would grow in our relationship with you that we would fall more in love with you today than we were yesterday. And we would draw closer to you today than we were yesterday. Father, I pray that you would be with Pastor and, and his family as they're not here. Just continue to, to guide them, continue to bless them, to continue to give them vision. Father, continue to just use them and work in their lives. We love you and we praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So I want to ask you, as um, I'm up here, I want to get a little interactive. What do you think are some daily, um, now I just lost the word, some daily disciplines that we need in our relationship with God? What are, what are daily disciplines? Prayer is one of them. We talked about that. Um, we, we heard about that earlier. What else do you think is a daily discipline that we need to have? Reading the Bible. Definitely being in God's word. Worship. Yeah. Worship is definitely one. Worship helps us to realize that we're not as big as we think we are, right? That there is somebody out there, something out there that's bigger than us. Uh, reading the Bible helps us to uh, communicate with God, right? It, it helps God to communicate with us. Prayer helps us to communicate with God. What other daily disciplines do we need to have? I would say that those are definitely the three biggest Service, I would say, is a daily discipline. If we're serving somebody, whether it be family members or something like that, now I'm not saying, you know, you walk up with the, the tray and the, here's your food. I'm not saying serve that way, right? But doing things that help people out. It is a big step in helping us, again, to put ourselves in our place, right? Because if you think about it, Jesus came to serve and not be served, right? If anybody on this earth should have been served, it would be Jesus. But that's not how he came. Jesus came and he said, one thing that I'm going to do every day is I'm going to serve people. So he got down and he washed his disciples' feet. He became the lowest of the low to be able to wash his disciples' feet. And his disciples freaked out. Whoa, what are you doing? That, we have servants and, that have servants to do that. And Jesus said, you don't understand. I came to serve. Right? And if our Lord and our Savior and our King came to serve, then that should be something that we do. Right? That should be something that we do every day, is serving others. Serving others. Somehow, some way. Whether it be your spouse or your children or any of that. Some of you might be looking. I took my wedding ring off this morning to put amazing gel in my hair, right, to make myself look a little better, and I forgot to pick up my wedding ring and stick it on my finger. 
So I'm not going home after this. My family's out at the river, so I'm headed to the river after service. So I'll get out there and I'll be like, babe, yeah, I left my wedding ring at home. But the good news is I can't lose it in the river like I've done a couple times before, you know, in my 22 years of being married, um, or almost 22 years. We'll celebrate 22 in June. I've lost a couple wedding rings in the river. Um, so at least I can't lose this one in the river, right? But anyway, serving. Right? Serving every day. Doing something to put somebody else first. Because when we put somebody else first, it just... Uh, when I've served, it's brought me more joy than it's brought the people that I've served. That's just how God works. Right? It just brings us more joy than what we could possibly give. And that's how God created it to be. Right? Serving others. And then let's talk about prayer. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Most of you guys know the story of Daniel in the lion's den. But one thing I, I want you to see about Daniel in the lion's den is Daniel had this daily discipline of prayer. So we're going to start in chapter 6. We're going to read not all of the chapter, but a, a good majority of it. I'll read it to you real quick. You can follow along. It says in, verse six, uh, in chapter 6, verse 1, it says, It pleased Darius, <clears throat> excuse me, it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three ministers over each of them, and one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them and then so that the king didn't have to suffer loss. Now Daniel was so distinguished himself among the other administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in the conduct of government affairs, but they weren't able to do so. So everybody, Daniel set himself so far above everybody else that everybody was frustrated because Daniel was above them, right? And thank you so much. And Daniel was about to be appointed over everybody. The only person that was going to be higher than, the, was, than him was the king. And so as this was happening, everybody else got jealous. Isn't this something that we deal with all the time, jealousy? Something good happens to somebody else and you're like, why couldn't that happen to me? Why am I not being blessed that way? So that's what happens with these other administrators. They got frustrated. So they tried to find grounds to, to get Daniel taken off. It says, um, at this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel and his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him. Wouldn't that be nice if there were no corruption in our government? Because he was trustworthy and he was neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any by, uh, basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So they realized that Daniel was, was above reproach. They realized that Daniel was good, right? It says in verse eight, uh, verse six, so these administrators and satraps went to a group, uh, took a group to the king and they said, king Dar may King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefaces, satraps, advisors, and government uh, governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human during the next 30 days, except to you, shall be put to death. Your majesty, shall that person be thrown into the lion's den? Now your majesty, issue this decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. So these guys came up to the king and they, they went on and stroked the king's ego, right? King, why don't you put in uh, to law that nobody can pray to any other God or human except to you in the next 30 days? The king's like, oh, that's a great idea. 
Everybody just pray to me? Of course, that, oh yeah, let's do that, right? Now they did this because they knew that Daniel would not pray to the king. They knew that Daniel had such a, a relationship with God that he would not bow down and pray to any other God or to a human. So they found a way to trap Daniel, right? In verse 10, it says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So what happened? Daniel prayed three times a day, at the very minimum, in his upstairs room to God. And I say at the very minimum because I'm sure Daniel talked to God throughout the day when he wasn't just in his upstairs room. But in the Bible it says he would go to his upstairs room and pray towards Jerusalem. Now, there was no reason for him to necessarily pray towards Jerusalem, except Jerusalem was the, the city of God, right? There was no special reason that he did that. It, it wasn't like he was stuck. He could pray anywhere, just like we can pray anywhere. He didn't necessarily have to face that way. But, but that was the tradition of the time. So that's what he did. But he did it so often that the other, other governors knew this, Right? They knew that Daniel prayed. My question to you, my question to me, do people know that we pray? Do people know that you pray? Do they know that you pray so when they have a prayer request, they come up and they say, hey, can you pray for me? Do they know that that's built into your daily lives? Because that is one thing that should be a daily discipline that we do. That we pray. And I love that at the beginning of every service, you have an opportunity to pray with people up here up front. I, I, it, it, uh, I love it. That it's part of your service. At our church, we pray at the end of the service. They have an opportunity to come up to the elders and to pray and to to do that. But to have it part of your worship service, that's awesome. To have a little bit of music playing over you and, and not to have it to where all your, your prayer requests are just scattered among everybody, but an opportunity to pray with somebody. Is that built into your life? I'm a, I'm a substitute teacher this year. And I don't have an opportunity as much as I would like to share with the students about my faith, especially in public schools. That's definitely a no-no, unless they come up to me and they talk to me about it. But I have an opportunity to impact other teachers' lives. I have an impact, uh, an opportunity to impact their lives as we're talking. I've been in the PE department of three different schools, and you have some downtime, and you just get to talk to the other coaches and do all of that. <laughs> and the opportunity that I have to be able to, to talk to the other coaches, to, to share about my faith, right? Because if they ask, hey, what else have you done? I get to tell them, oh, I've taught. Well, what'd you teach? Well, it's perfect because I taught at Christian school. So I got to, to offer to them. I got to teach Bible and, and coach PE. And they go, oh, you taught Bible? So you believe in God? And then they get to open up the conversation, right? And then we get to have that opportunity to pray with each other and to do all of that. But do people at your work, do they know that you pray? I'm not saying you go to work on, on Tuesday and you sit down in the middle of the workroom and you, you have your head bowed and, and you start praying out loud. I'm not saying that because that might push some people away. Maybe that's what you have to do. But do they know, can they see in your faith that you pray? Do they know? <clears throat> that you talk to God. So when they have an issue in their life, they say, hey, can, can you pray with me? Can you pray with me? Because Daniel, 
He prayed before this decree went into effect. The decree went into effect and, and he wasn't scared of it. He didn't say, oh no, now I need to start praying. No, they put this decree into effect because Daniel prayed. That's how they could trap him. Right? It goes on. And it says, three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So it worked. They found him praying. They caught him. But Daniel knew that they would come looking for him. Daniel knew that they knew that he prayed. So it wasn't a surprise to Daniel. So these, these men, it says they went to the king and they spoke to him about his royal decree. They said, did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered. And you know, he's the king, so he answered and I could see him. Yes, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. So the king's like, of course I made that decree. The only person, the only person that they can pray to is me. And then it says, then the, the governor said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decrees you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, it says he was greatly distressed. Because the, th the king wasn't thinking clearly. The king knew Daniel prayed. That's why the king put, was about to put Daniel in charge of everything. The king knew that God was on Daniel's side. But the king had his ego stroked by some people. And he wasn't thinking. So when he put the decree into effect, he forgot about Daniel. Right? So the king now says, oh, my hands are tied. My hands are tied. It says, when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. And he was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. <clears throat> so the king tried to save Daniel. Tried to do everything in his power. And he was the most powerful person at the time. So he thought. It says, when the men went as a group to the king Darius, and he said to them, remember your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no decree or edict that the king issued can be changed. So the king gave the order, and he had Daniel brought, and he threw him into the lion's den. And the king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. Now these lions were not well-fed lions. <laughs> Most of the people that got thrown into the lion's den at this time didn't even hit the ground before they were dead. That's how hungry these lions were. The lions would destroy them before they even made it to the ground. Right? It says in verse 17, A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the ring of his nobles. So the Daniel situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. So the king knew that he had messed up. The king had a, a place in his heart, a special place in his heart for Daniel. But that didn't matter because the king's law was, was broken. Daniel knew that he broke the king's law. Daniel wasn't hiding it. It didn't say Daniel ran out back and started praying. It doesn't say Daniel ran into the woods and started praying. It said Daniel prayed three times a day, exactly where he prayed every single day for however long before that. Right? If we are a people of prayer, and we are a people like Daniel, then we should be praying all throughout the day as well. Right? We shouldn't just be praying at mealtime. We shouldn't just be praying before bed. We shouldn't just be praying when we wake up. We should be in constant communication with God. Think about the, the person that's closest to you, whether it be your spouse, your best friend, your, your mom or dad, your siblings, your, your sons, daughters. 
If you only talk to them once a day, wouldn't there be something, something would be off, right? So something would be a little different. Well, the same thing with God, isn't it? God should be our number one priority. He should be the one that we're in constant communication with. More so than we're in communication with other people. Most of us, especially kids these days, they're in constant communication with other people. Right? But they're not in constant communication with God. If God had a cell phone, would you be texting him? Like you do everybody else? We don't even need a cell phone to text God. We have a, a relationship with him. So it goes on, the story goes on, and, and it says in verse 19, At the first light of dawn, the king got up, and he hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in, a, in an anguished voice. Really, as the king, who's thrown multiple people into a lion's den, He's really thinking that Daniel's alive. Right? Like he's really thinking that these lions that he hasn't fed in a couple months are going to leave somebody alone. But he goes and he has faith in Daniel's God, right? And it says, he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the, bone, from the lions? And then it says, out of, the, out of the den. Daniel answered, may the king live forever. Which I don't know if I'd be saying that, right? As the king threw me into the lion's den. King, may you live forever, even though you just tried to kill me. My God and his angel, or my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent in the, in the eyes, or innocent in God's eyes. Nor have I done anything wrong before you, your majesty. It says the king was overjoyed and he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him. Because he had trusted his God. No wound was found on Daniel because he trusted God. His God. That, that's pretty amazing. One of the reasons I wanted to, to share this message is because we as humans, we leak. I was at a church service in Corona a few weeks ago. My, my nieces, uh, three of my nieces and one of my nephews got baptized. And it happened to be at the church um, that had a preschool that my wife used to work at years ago. And so it was awesome to, to be able to go back and to see Pastor and his wife. And his wife was the, the director and still is the director of the preschool that my wife used to work at. And my wife at the time was the assistant director. And so we became close with Pastor and his wife and their family and all that. And then when life changes and, and people move on, right, we stay in contact a little bit and... Not as much as you like, of course, right? Uh, so we got to go back and we got to see him. And he gave this message about how we as humans, we leak. And I was like, that's what I'm preaching on when I preach for Pastor Kevin. Because I knew I, I was going to be preaching uh, today and then on the 11th for Pastor Kevin. I've known for a little while now. And when Pastor Travis said, humans leak, I was like, babe, I need a pen. I'm writing this down. Humans leak. And it's true, right? We leak. We leak. We cry. We go to the restroom. We sweat. But, but I'm not talking about that kind of leaking. I'm talking about in our spiritual lives. Well, why do we need to constantly be reminded to pray? Why do we need to constantly be reminded to, to, to read the Bible? To memorize scripture? Because we leak, people. I leak. I leak as a pastor, as an elder in my church, as a dad, I leak. And when I leak, I mean I mess up. I forget things, right? We all do. None of us is perfect. And if anybody says that they are, you know right there that they've messed up and they've lied. 
Only one person that's ever walked this face of the earth was, was perfect, and he died because of our sins. He died because of our mess-ups, not his. So we need to, to pray just like Daniel did. Pray. We need to pray like Jesus did. Jesus, the Son of God, prayed all the time. Every time after he preached, what did he do? He got away by himself and he hung out with his dad. He prayed to God. If Jesus, who was God, who is God, prayed to his Father, how much more do we, who is not God, need to pray to God? Jesus prayed. The Apostle Paul prayed. Every letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church starts out with, I pray for you every time I think about you. Do you pray for your friends every time you think about them? God lays somebody on your heart. Do you pray for that person? I know I don't all the time. I know that that's not one of my, my daily disciplines. That, 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 that is one of my daily disciplines that I need to work on. That's not one that I, I have perfected. When God lays something on my heart. Or when something happens to a friend of yours or, or whatever, do you say, hey, I'll pray for you, and then forget to pray? Because that's me. And I stand up here as somebody that, that is a pastor that is supposed to be in this daily discipline of prayer all the time. I forget. So you know what I try and do? I try and stop and pray for them right there. Right? Because then at least I prayed for them once. But man, these giants of the Bible who are only giants because of the God that they serve. They're not giants because of who they are. They're, they're giants because of the God that they serve. David didn't go and, and slay Goliath because David was this cool, athletic you know, super ultra ninja guy. No. David went up and said, hey, you're messing, you're talking trash about my God and my God has something to say about that. Paul, who used to be Saul, who killed Christians, who tortured Christians, who tortured people that followed Christ, ended up writing most of the New Testament not because of how cool he was, but because of how cool the God he served is. Not was, is. Because that's the same God that we serve. Guys, we need to pray. Listen to what it says about reading and memorizing scripture. In Psalms 119, 1-16, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Why do we need to memorize scripture? Because we're dumb. And we sin. And we fall into the same sin day after day after day. So God wants us to memorize scripture. So when we go to fall into that same sin, God can say, hey, remember, you're not supposed to gossip. And as you go to talk to your, your friend at the water cooler and you start to gossip, God says, hey, remember what my word says. Don't talk about people and you're like, so how about them Mets? How about those golden nights? Did you see that, that blue jay that just flew by? Right? Because what were you going to do? You were about to gossip and God said, no, no. You memorize scripture and I'm going to use that to remind you not to gossip. I'm going to use that to remind you not to fall into temptation. Right? This is why we memorize scripture. In Deuteronomy, it says... Before I, I mess it up, I'm just going to open up to it. In Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. I'm struggling this morning, sorry. Chapter 6, verse 8. Well, we'll start at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, 
The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love your God, love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Verse 7, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols, it says in verse 8, on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. Why do we need to do all that? Because we constantly need to be reminded. Right? We constantly need to be reminded that we need to be in Scripture. That we need to memorize Scripture. This is what we need to do. Tie them on your wrists. Put them, bind them on your foreheads. Why? So we can see them every day. When I was a youth pastor, my office had scripture verses and quotes all over it. People would walk in and they'd be like, what in the world? But I needed that constant reminder. I needed to be reminded that I need to love the Lord all the time. That I need to love my neighbor as myself. That I need to love my enemies. I needed to be reminded of that. I need to hide that in my heart. So that when somebody's going through something or when I'm going through something, God can use that and spark that back up in me. Because what did I tell you? I, I, I told you we leak, right? And I want to show you what I mean by we leak. So I brought a little, a little thing to demonstrate. I know we have new carpet and stuff, so Pastor Kevin, I'm sorry if I spill a little bit. But we leak. So I'm going to put this here so you guys can still hear me, but you can see as well. Let's see if I can do it without. I always joke with everybody and say, I only need to be 2% smarter than the thing you're dealing with. Right? 2% smarter and you can, you can figure it out. All right, can you guys hear me still? So we leak. And we leak in a bunch of different ways. We have a bunch of reasons that we leak. We leak because we get hurt and we get damaged, right? We leak because of these different things. So, so let's say that this red solo cup is us. And we start to, to pour in God's word, but we leak. And man, do we leak. That's not even half full. And look at all that. Right? And we leak. And if we don't keep constantly pouring stuff into ourselves, we don't keep constantly pouring God's word into us, we leak. And we can, we can help people so as far as we are, are full. But as we leak and we don't keep filling ourselves up, what happens? We get messed up. We start to fall into to depression. We start to feel like we're not worthy. And we leak because of a whole bunch of different reasons. We leak because maybe mom and dad weren't at home when we were kids. We leak because um, somebody said to us something to us when we were younger that we can't get out of our heads. We leak because somebody close to us died. We leak. And as we leak, we don't have anything else to pour into people. Right? Because we should have a good 12 ounces to pour into people. So what happens when we, when we start praying all the time? What happens when we start reading our Bibles? It's like another solo cup comes. And our solo cup gets encased by this solo cup. Right? And as we pour into this solo cup, and it gets full... The old solo cup, we still leak, but we don't leak nearly as much, right? Because we start to learn how to handle these things. We start to learn that reading scripture helps us mentally. We start to learn that reading scripture helps us to keep us focused on God. I'm still three quarters of the way full in my, my first cup, even though I'm still not perfect. None of us are ever going to be perfect, 
right? We're all going to leak a little bit. But if we can start doing things, putting these daily disciplines into our life, we're not going to leak out as much, right? Now watch what happens. If we do this all the time, we're not just going to leak. We're going to start spilling and splashing on other people. This is what I need us to do. This is what we're called to do as Christians. We're called to be in God so much that we splash out on other people. Do you get it? But you can't splash out on other people if you're not full. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't splash out on other people. We're going to leak and we're going to spill that way. But we're not going to be able to splash out on other people if we're not full. You're not going to be able to splash out God's joy. You're not going to be able to splash out God's love. You're not going to be able to splash those things out. That's what God wants. God wants to overflow, overfill you so much that you splash out, not leak, that you splash out on other people. Are we going to leak still? Yes, because we're not perfect. But we're going to leak a lot less and we're going to splash a lot more if we're allowing God to overflow our cup. And that's what God promises that he'll do. God promises that he will overflow us with love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, with, with all of the fruits of the Spirit, if we start following him. He will overflow us so we can splash onto other people. And as we splash onto other people, they start to go, wait a minute, but I leak. And you say, so do I. But I'm splashing because I'm filling myself with God's word. I'm splashing because I'm filling myself with prayer, which is communication with God. I'm splashing because I'm able to realize that I am not enough by myself. I need somebody else with me. Guys, this is what we need to do. Girls, this is what we need to do. We need to splash, not leak. But it's okay if we leak. Because everybody leaks. But it's not okay just to be sitting there going, oh well, I leak, and not do anything about it. Right? Because if you're not being poured into, you're never going to be able to pour into anybody else. Never. And we're called to be disciples. We're called to go and to share God's word with other people. We're called to go and to be God's hands and feet. To pray for others. <clears throat> and we can't do that if we're not being filled. We can't, <clears throat> wow, we can't do that if you're not allowing somebody else to pour into you. So if you're feeling like, like you're not enough right now, join the club. Join the club. If you're feeling like you're not good enough to do something, join the club because that's how 90% of the people feel. But most of us are too proud to go up and get help. Most of us are too proud to, to come to pastor or to the board or to a trusted friend and ask for prayer. Ask for help. About a week before Easter, all of, all of, most of Holy Week, uh, I was down and out, like, my wife thought I was going to die. I have some, some stuff that happened to me last year that I'm still trying to get over stress and all of that. Trust me, stress is a real thing, and it, it can be deadly. So I was feeling better, so I stopped taking my, my supplements, I stopped doing all that because I was feeling better, right? And I'm like, I don't need to do that stuff, I'm good. Yeah, well, you're not always good when that happens. So I get a little cold and it turned into something else and I don't know, it, it was just crazy. I was coughing like crazy, hacking up a lung and just not feeling great. But of course, as a guy, I didn't ask for help. So my wife's finally like, we're doing one of two things. You're going to your doctor, we're going to urgent care right now. 
right? And as a man, I'm like, I'm not going to the doctor. I can take care of it. I got this on my own. I didn't have it on my own. So I'm back, taking off my supplements, taking all the, you know, the stuff that I need to take to keep my body healthy and going, and I'm feeling great. I'm doing well. But it's because I had to have somebody pour into me. Well, it's the same way with our spiritual life. You have to have somebody pour into you. You have to be in church so God can pour into you. So you can fill your cup again. And you, you have to work on filling your cup before you can try and help other people. Because I can't pour into you what I don't have in me. Right? And this is our problem. We try and give and give and give sometimes, but we're not taking and, and receiving. And if you don't receive, you can't give. We need to pray every day, all throughout the day. We need to be in Scripture every day, all throughout the day, because that's how God communicates with us, right? Through His written word, through songs, through prayer. We need to be serving, because as we serve, we realize that we're not the most important person on this earth. Other people are. God is. And as we serve, we're serving God, right? You heard Jesus say uh, to, his, to his disciples, when, when, you, when I was naked, you clothed me, and when I was hungry, you fed me. And his disciples go, whoa, whoa. We didn't know you were hungry. We didn't know you were naked. We didn't know you needed these certain things. And God said, when you do these to the least of these, you're doing these unto me. Right? One of the students, when I was a youth pastor, said, how can I offer God a glass of water, do I just take my bottle and hold it up and wait until it evaporates and that's how I know God's, you know, drank it? And I said, no, you, you offer somebody else a bottle of water. Somebody that needs it, that's how you give God a glass of water. You take care of his children. And then it clicked for him. That's what service is. Yeah, that's what service is. Taking care of those in need. Taking care of those in need. And if we do that every day, we realize that we are way more blessed to give than we are to receive. You realize that, that giving is the one thing God calls us to challenge him in? God says, you think you can outgive me? Try it. Try it. Try and outgive me. Give to the church and see what I do. He challenges us. Because he knows everything and he provides everything. I'm a substitute teacher, so when the school year ends in a couple weeks for, for our district, I don't have a job over the summer. It's a stressful thing, right? And all of a sudden in the mail, a check came. It, it was only 12 bucks. But a check came that we had no idea we were getting. And, and my wife lit up and she's like, look at what came. And I looked at it and I was like, it's $12. And she gave me that look like, are you stupid? And I verbally, she didn't say, are you stupid? But I verbally answered, yes, I'm stupid. And she goes, if God provided us a $12 check, don't you think he'll provide us more? <laughs> right? And I sat there dumbfounded like, God, I'm the one that's supposed to be preaching on Sunday. Right? Right? I'm the one that's supposed to be close enough to you to, to remember that. That, that when a, no matter how much the amount of the check is, it's not the amount of the check, it's God saying, hey, I got you. It's the, the Israelites waking up in the middle of the desert with manna all over the place that they didn't do anything for, and they eat it, and it's, it's amazing for them, and then they forget that God was the one that provided it. So church, what we need to do Pray every day, constantly. Be in the Word of God every day. Serve every day. Worship every day. These need to be daily disciplines that we start plugging into our lives. Because we all leak. But we can handle the leaking, and it'll be a lot less if we're hanging out with God. Because God will put those patches 
Why do you think Flex Seal is invented now? Right? Just stick some Flex Seal on it. Your house will never leak again. My sister lives in North Carolina, and I wanted to buy that Flex Seal stuff as the hurricane comes and tape it halfway up their doorway and all along their windows to see if, <laughs> see if her house doesn't flood. Come on, kid, I'll, I challenge you. That's what I call her. I call her kid. Come on, kid, I challenge you. Just put that stuff up. Flex Seal says nothing will get in. Just try it. Right? Somewhere that's going to lead to eventually. But with God, God will help you to stop leaking. And when we do leak, God will be able to fix what he needs to fix and show us that it's okay to leak like that as long as you're trusting me. Will you pray with me? Father, we come. We thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I pray that as I know you, you were talking directly to me as well. I pray that others hear you talking directly to them. Father, that we would hear you and we would start to say, okay, God, I can't do this on my own. Bring somebody to me that can help me. Show me somebody that I can talk to. Show me somebody that will sit with me. Show me somebody that whatever you need, God, I'm willing because I'm leaking a lot and I can't control it. And I need you. I need you to help me with my daily discipline of prayer. I need you to help me with my daily discipline of Bible reading. I need you to help me with my daily discipline of serving and of worship. Because the closer I get to you, the more I start to see your will in my life. The more I start to see your direction that you want me to take, that job that, that you have waiting for, whatever it is, Lord, that relationship that's being restored with a family member or a friend that's been broken. The more I draw closer to you, the more you work all those things out. So Father, work those things out in the congregation's life. Help us to draw closer to you. Not so our life becomes easier, but so we know that you're walking through it with us. We love you, Father. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Jordan will take it. Um, if you have giving, then uh, there's a place in the back that you can drop that off. Um, otherwise, have a blessed rest of your weekend. Remember those that, that served as, as we have Memorial Day tomorrow, that it's not just a, a holiday, but it truly is a remembrance and a thank you to those that served and, and gave their life. But thank you for being here. I will see you in a couple weeks. Have a blessed week.